Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. And today I'm going to be reviewing another one of my favorite films of all time, Jaws. This film, of course, stars Roy Scheider, Robert Shaw, and a very young Richard Dreyfuss. And it was directed by up-and-comer Steven Spielberg. You guys might have heard of him by this point. Maybe. And this past weekend marks the 45th anniversary of this film's theatrical release. Sheesh. It's, of course, based off of Peter Benchley's best-selling novel of the same name. He also had a hand in writing this screenplay, fun fact. A young woman is yanked suddenly below the ocean's surface one night by a lethal great white shark. No surprise, she never returns. And when pieces of her mangled corpse wash ashore, police chief Martin Brody, played by Roy Scheider, suspects the worst. However, Mayor Vaughn, played by Murray Hamilton, very mindful of the lucrative tourist trade and the approaching 4th of July holiday, refuses to close the beaches because of a business-killing shark alert. However, after the shark kills a few more victims, the mayor orders the local fishermen to catch the culprit, which catches the attention of Quint, played by Robert Shaw. However, a couple of local fishermen catch a shark, but Richard Dreyfus says it is a shark not THE shark. And a visiting scientist Matthew Hooper, played by Richard Dreyfus, warns the mayor that reopening the beaches like he's doing because they caught a shark is not a good idea. He concludes that these attacks were probably caused by a far more formidable Great White. And after this shark gobbles up one more victim, Brody and Hooper join forces with Quint, the only local fisherman willing to take on the Great White, especially since the price is right. The three ride off on Quint's boat, the Orca, and they go to hunt this thing down. Even though this was only Steven Spielberg's second feature film, a lot of people feel like it was Jaws that put Steven Spielberg's name on the map as a household name. Fun fact, this is also the film that invented the term blockbuster when it was released back in 1975 because people were literally lining up around the block to go into the theater to see this movie on the big screen. Hence the name, Blockbuster. All right, so story time, guys. I only watched Jaws once when I was younger. I can't remember exactly how old I was. I, If I had to guess, I probably was around 10 years old the first time I watched Jaws. And back then, once was enough because this film traumatized me when I was younger. I mean, you know, the scene where Quint is gobbled up by the shark during the climax. Yoy. I mean, that scene even gave my dad nightmares when he was a kid. And he's not that easy to scare. It was definitely a long time before I went out swimming in the ocean again because of Jaws. And I would watch bits and pieces of Jaws here and there, but I never sat through and watched the whole thing until I actually bought the Blu-ray a few years back. For any Blu-ray collector out there, just heads up. If you don't have this, something's wrong. But anyway, since I have bought the Blu-ray, I've watched this film a few times, at least once a year, and I'm convinced that Jaws is a masterpiece. And you guys want to know what a really fascinating thing about a rewatch of Jaws is like in 2020? It makes Jaws a surprisingly super relevant movie. You know, how the authority figure doesn't listen to the scientists about not closing the beaches because of greed. Surprisingly super relevant, which is scary as hell in and of itself. And that's honestly one of the biggest praises that I can give Jaws is that it's a very simple concept. This is a classic thriller, perfect storytelling, perfect screenwriting. This film is built around one primal instinct through its antagonist, who, by the way, does not have a single line of dialogue. Fear. No matter what anyone tells you, no matter how many rewatches I get of this thing, this film is still scary as f And that fear is instilled a lot through not just the shots of the shark fin peeking up from underwater, which has since become quite the iconic shot. It's rather beautiful. Those scenes could not be as effective as they are without John Williams' magnificent score. That theme song, very simple in nature, but it still instills fear in everybody who watches the movie and hears those low bass notes. Yeah, sometimes key is simplicity. And something that I think a lot of people tend to forget about Jaws, especially a lot of people in my personal life, there's something a lot of people tend to overlook. It's not just a surface scary monster movie. You know, like, oh no, look at that shark. He's gonna eat those dumbass people on that rickety ass boat. No, you actually care about whether or not these characters get eaten by the shark or not because the script is so well written. It gives these characters 
so much more depth than any other, a lot of the other surface scary monster movies we're getting these days. These characters are so likable and so easy to root for. Roy Scheider, who always seems to be typecast as the police officer, may he rest in peace. Robert Shaw, lots of great one-liners from him as Quint. Hooper! Neutral, you idiot! Hooper! Richard Dreyfuss as Hooper. Perfect casting. All three of them, fantastic here. These guys were super easy to love. Like I said, the script writes these three guys so well. And that is most prevalent in the discussion scene where they're sitting at the table, eating dinner, bonding, talking about life. I think Steven Spielberg has actually gone on record saying that was his favorite scene to shoot. They're all just kind of like sitting around the table, telling stories about their life, showing each other their battle scars, singing songs. Oh, well, what I do to you fierce Spanish ladies. Oh, well, what I do you ladies of Spain. Show me the way to go home. Boom, boom, boom. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. Can't help it. So quotable. And Steven Spielberg's direction in this movie, perfect. So careful, so precise about every shot here. And that's another thing. I feel like he set the groundwork for what a lot of these monster films are trying to do nowadays. Not show too much of the monster until the climax. But I feel like this groundwork is botched a lot these days. Steven Spielberg was very careful not to show too much of the monster because the shark was a big animatronic tool, basically. Yeah, CGI definitely did not exist in the 70s. And there would be times when the shark wasn't working, so a lot of improv had to be done on set. Lots of things were going wrong. Some people may find this a miracle that Jaws was as good as it was. But what pulls it through is just such a masterclass in screenwriting, storytelling, acting, direction, just everything about Jaws is just so... Incredible, guys. This is the movie that immortalized Steven Spielberg in Hollywood forever. It's the first blockbuster, deservedly so. Jaws is the gift that keeps on giving. And I really don't have any flaws with this movie. I think it's perfect. I'm going to give it my highest grade of an A+. I mean, what else can I say about Jaws that hasn't already been said at this point, guys? If you've seen the film, go watch it again. If you've never seen the film... Why? Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching the video. What do you guys think of Jaws? What are some of your favorite scenes or moments from that film? And what are some of your favorite monster movies? Go ahead and leave those thoughts down in the comments below. Of course, if you like what you saw today, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below as hard as you possibly can. You guys rock. Thank you again so much for checking out the video. Look forward to more reviews very soon. And with all that being said, back talk, commence.